Coming up on the mashup, it's fast and it's fun as athletes get their moment in the sun. So don't drop your mobile device. The mashup is next. The mashup is brought to you by William A. Smith & Son Insurance. You enjoy the game, we'll worry about the other stuff. And Davis Furniture on Route 9 in Poughkeepsie. Giving our customers more and charging less for over 90 years. Hi everyone and welcome to the mashup. Plenty to share from the past week in local sports, including some soccer, football, and an in-studio interview with one of the biggest scoring threats in Section 9. So let's first start with the Battle of the Indians, Ketchum and Mayapak. The Mayapak Indians were visiting Ketchum on Ketchum's new turf field and playing at night under Ketchum's newly installed lights. A packed house in Wappingers for Ketchum Senior Night, and this one was scoreless through the first half, even though both teams had their chances. But in the second half, Ketchum offered Mayapak a few unforeseen chances, as Martin Ventura pounces on the loose ball. And that leads to this. Ryan Dugan rolls right and hits Brendan Diorio with a bullet. He gets pushed out of bounds just before hitting pay dirt, and then Dugan threads the needle with a lofty pass to Real Allen. The senior quarterback follows that up, hitting his favorite target again with a perfectly executed option play. Ketchum had some glimpses of glory as Tim Cipollini connects with Nick Nevins. A great catch as the third quarter's winding down. And then a 49-yarder from Cipollini to Nevins for Ketchum's only TD of the game. Mayapak comes out on top of the William A. Smith & Son Insurance scoreboard, 20-7 the final. What do you think attributed to your win today? Uh, O-line was getting a push up front. We've had a couple injuries, but a lot of guys were stepping up, and that's yeah. huge for us, and defense is always coming up big. Yeah. How important was this win for you guys, and what's to come for the postseason? Well, it's huge. Um, coming into tonight, we were the seventh seed, which was a tremendous accomplishment. And, you know, just to finish the year four and two, we'll take it one thing at a time. Right now, I'm thrilled that we won, and uh, we're going to be home for qualifying week, and we'll go from there. Big win for the Arlington Admirals, who are now 5-1 and one on the season. And taking on Fox Lane, the Admirals continue to dominate. And John Jay beats Porchester 36-7. James Luciano scored twice. Over in Section 9, the Spack and Kill Spartans wanted to have a big showing for its homecoming, so they brought in the portable lights, they loaded up the stands with former players and coaches, and they brought the parents out on the field, and then they fired up Dakeem Lewinson, and off they went for the big win over Highland. From the 27-yard line, Lewinson busts up the gut and takes it to the wide open yonder for a 73-yard touchdown run. Then a little razzle-dazzle as Lewinson hands off to Nasir Stewart Milligan. And he threads his way through the defense for a 58-yard TD run. Lewinson again stretches it to the outside, waiting for his blockers, and then off he goes. And here's the same play as before as Nasir finds the seam and takes it into the end zone Spackenkill wins big on the William A. Smith & Son Insurance scoreboard, 49-7 the final. Over in soccer, the Spackenkill boys have been running rampant with 10 straight wins after two early season losses to begin the 2017 campaign. But now, with the players on the team all on the same page, the Spartans are winning and having a great time doing it. Senior day for the Spartans, hosting Millbrook. Spack and Kill in Millbrook. The Spartans were coming off a double overtime win over Rhinebeck just 24 hours earlier. And it was senior day for the Spartans. That meant guys like Ian Nevers, who's still a junior, got a chance to come out of his normal keeper spot and play a little offense. And check out the stutter step. Not bad for a converted football player. Credit to Millbrook goalie Yaziel Jimenez. He was stopping shots left and right in the first 10 minutes of the game. Off another corner kick, Andrew Marrera heads it to the far side and Spackenkill finally breaks the ice in the 13th minute. 
and once the ice was broken, the fishing was plentiful. From the back side of the field, Cameron Reichel sends it ahead to Nick Jenko, who leads Demetrius Marukas. And look who gets the follow-up, it's Nevers! And Justin Moore sends it to the net where Victor Drasny uses a high knee approach. It was 4-0 at halftime. The Spartans added two more in the second half and made it a three-game sweep week with a 6-0 win over Millbrook on the William A. Smith & Son scoreboard. Uh, Nick Jenko over there, shout out Nick. He, uh, he told me I needed to score today. They tried to get me the opportunity and it happened. Ball came through, Dimitri hit it off the keeper and I don't know, I was just in the right spot at the right time. It's pretty exciting for me. You know, the team has come a long way. Okay, we started off 0-2, rallying 10 wins in a row. It has been great for them, for the morale and the chemistry has been great. We're working well as a team and uh, couldn't ask for more from them. Checking out some other scores from the area, Wallkill beat Marlboro 4-0. John Lociero scored three of those goals for Wallkill. Newburg beat Middletown 2-1 in double overtime. Anthony Santamaria scored with two minutes left in the second overtime period. In football, again Middletown goes to overtime, but this time came out with a 24-21 win over Port Jervis to win the Erie Bell. Monroe Woodbury beat Newburg 28-17. Ellenville gets the happy bus ride home with a 34-13 win over Dover. Pinebush also wins on the road 28-7 over Kingston. Millbrook was in a tight one with Tuckahoe. They come out on top with a one-point win. Pine Plains was also in a one-point affair 13-12 over Antiora. Over in Section 1, Yorktown took care of Lords 31-7. Sorgerties beat Roosevelt 35-26. E.J. Budai scored twice. Up at the college level, Maris fell to Columbia 41-17. And Army continues to ride the wave with a 49-12 win over Rice. That puts the Black Knights at 4-2 with the big game against Navy this weekend. New Balls continues to stay undefeated with a 46-3 win over Rondout. And Marlboro is also undefeated with a 56-6 win over Red Hook. And speaking of those two teams, the big showdown this weekend in New Paul's, a battle of the undefeated and maybe some unfinished business for the Iron Dukes because New Paul's, the defending league champs, spoiled a five-year run that the Marlboro Iron Dukes had for, as league champs. And so the Huguenots beat Marlboro last year and now joining us in the studio is one of the catalysts from the Iron Dukes team this year and over the past few years, and that is Phil DeSantis. Thanks so much for coming in. Thank you, sir. Uh, you've got this big game. I'm sure it's on everybody's mind. Uh, we know that uh, the mindset has been one game at a time, one game at a time. You've got to look on your schedule, though, and say, when we get new polls. Uh, yeah, at the beginning of the season, we always had the mindset of one game at a time, coming to the week 0-0. But in the back of our mind, we always have new polls. Last year, that, uh, that really hurt us. That after five years of being on top, getting kicked out of there, it's just... Uh, really had an impact on the team and is really pushing our team this year to try and uh, get it to another level. Let, let's talk about you playing at another level because uh, there are times when you see Phil run and and it's it's almost effortless. You got a great north to south game, right? Your your game is is, is really Thank you. in particular last week you're playing against Red Hook. Uh, I think it was like a five play drive, 60 something yards. You carried the ball every single time, 11 yards, 38 yards, five yards, three, and then you score. 15th touchdown of the season, yeah. you're closing in on 1,000 yards. What's the secret? I mean, uh, I've been playing since I was five years old, so all of that, uh, coming up to this point, it's just training and working out, because that's huge, gaining speed and strength. But the biggest thing for me, I believe, is vision. I think that uh, being able to see the field and knowing what move to make next uh, really uh, impacts my running ability. And you can train for that, I guess, but a lot of it is intuitive. 
and maybe genetic because, you know, your father was a player, your grandfather was a player. Uh, Justin Rodriguez, who has this S9 online a sports portal that covers all the Section 9 teams, uh, is doing a great job with that. And he did a great article on you guys and the generations of football in the DeSantis family. Yeah, it was a great article, and uh, my grandfather really liked it, of course. <laughs> but I mentioned how my grandfather played at UConn full scholarship and he did great for three years and he blew out his knee yeah, so right. which was very hard but yeah. I, I learned a lot from my grandfather when he talks to me about football and and your father as well you said that you trained with your father uh, what kind of training do you guys do well my dad's been my coach since I was five years old he was my youth coach from five all the way to like I think 14 then I joined varsity right. but my dad's always pushed me every year to get in the weight room to stay um, stay up on my film, always study the film because you can learn a lot from that kind of stuff. Yeah, and you guys are fortunate these days to have access to film online and everything the way the, the, things are set up today as compared to like when guys like your father played or your grandfather, or me or whatever. Uh, it was a whole different ball game back then. Definitely, definitely. The huddle is a huge thing yeah. and uh, being able to see all different um, angles of film, you, yeah. you can see all the little flaws in your game. I'm sure that uh, your offensive line has a lot to do with uh, with you gaining. Uh, you you do like uh, rituals that some of like the pros do, or you buy them like a steak dinner or McDonald's or something. Like <laughs> <laughs> Once we get uh, at the end of the season, I'm gonna treat the guys well. I have something planned, but uh, oh, yeah, huh? they'll see because we can't do it without those guys. Yeah, uh, we wouldn't be in the end zone. We wouldn't be getting the yards if they don't do their job. Yeah. Um, so, uh, on the horizon for you, uh, you're a good student, um, what, what kind of average do you have? Uh, I have like a 95 average. Really? Good for you. So, uh, what are you thinking as far as after high school, after your career here, where are you going? I'm not sure yet. I'm thinking um, SUNY Buffalo or SUNY Binghamton, either of those two schools, but uh, I'm not sure about football yet. It's, uh, it's always an option, but I haven't figured it all out yet. Yeah. Uh, what do you run the 40 in? I haven't measured my 40 since eighth grade, and I went to Don Bosco uh, for a football camp, and I ran a 4.8, so okay. I'm not sure about now. The biggest thing that you've found that you've been able to change in, in your game uh, that you've been able to get better at, what would that one thing be? Probably my reads, because uh, back in youth, we didn't really do many reads, but since uh, ninth grade on, I feel like I'm a much stronger player in that aspect that I know when to do what, when to take the ball, when to give the ball. You got you got a few other guys on the team who are, who are I mean, everybody is is a, is a player on that team, and, and it's such a rich history in Marlboro sports, but um, just a, a good breed of athletes, and you've got some great guys on your team as well who are carrying some of the load as well. Right. We have a lot of great players, but a lot uh, to do with all that is the coaching. We have great coaching in Marlboro. Our football staff is great, uh, led by Coach Ward. So we know coming to each week that we're prepared, which uh, I think is a big deal for us. So we're not very worried or nervous. If we can do our responsibilities, we feel like uh, we have a great chance in the game. Does Rich Ward have a soft side? If you talk to him outside of football and that kind of stuff, he does, <laughs> trust me. He's really a nice guy. I, I know, but he's like hard as nails, right? He is, he is. That's. That's kind of the mentality you need to have as a football coach, though. Yeah. To push the kids and... And you guys respect that. Of course. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Well, hey, thanks for coming in. It's great seeing you and talking to you. And uh, good luck this weekend against uh, New Paul's. It's going to be a huge game. Everybody's going to be there. We'll be there. And I'm sure that, uh, you know, uh, the outcome is going to be exciting as the, the game will be as well. So yeah. uh, thanks uh, again for coming in. Thank you so much. All right. We want to thank you for watching the matchup every Wednesday here on HVNN Sports. And for Phil DeSantis and the rest of the crew here at HVNN, I'm Charlie Cornacci. We'll see you next time.